All right, it's travel day again. We are leaving the Border Town RV Park, or they call it RV Resort. And we are going to head toward Susanville, California. So we have uh, 245 miles today, which for us is a fairly long day because this is going to be, other than we first take off here on 395, once we get through uh, the inspection station, there's Diane. Once we get through the inspection station, we're going to be on a two-lane highway, all back roads, beautiful back road country, the entire day until we hit I-5 over by McLeod, California. And then from McLeod, I don't know how far it is to Wairika, 20, I don't know, 20 miles, 25 miles of freeway. And then we'll get off the freeway and go to the RV park. So um, yeah, a lot of back road driving. We have driven or ridden, well I've driven and ridden, this route dozens of times. Um, I used to work in an outfit that had their corporate office in Reno. So I would go to, I would drive to Reno from Southern Oregon once a month, at least once a month. And uh, winter and winter and summer didn't matter. And it gets snowy out here. And we would come down on the motorcycle, Street Vibrations every year. We did that for years. So I've ridden this on the motorcycle, Diane and I both, um, I don't know, a couple dozen or more times. So anyway, here we go, getting on the uh, on-ramp, or getting on 395. We're gonna cruise along, we'll go for a while, and uh, go through the inspection station, and keep on going. I'm gonna stop, I'm gonna do a little something special for you in case you happen to go this route. There is a rest area past Susanville, about, it's about 100 miles from here, called Bogart Visitor Center. And uh, we're going into California right now. Bogart Visitor Center, behind, and there's a rest area there. And behind that rest area is a huge asphalt area they use for snowmobile staging in the wintertime. Normally, Diane and I would come through here, we would stop there and we would dry camp for the night or even two nights. But beings were really killing time to get to Oregon because we couldn't get in our campground early. Um, we decided to stay here an extra night. Then we're gonna stay in Wairika an extra night, have hookups. It's gonna be close to 90 degrees in Wairika, so we don't like dry camping in that kind of heat. All right, I'll quit yakking. Ride along with us, enjoy the scenery. Coming up upon the California inspection station. We get through here and then uh, we'll carry on. How you doing? That is one big ass fifth wheel. Pretty good size, but that's home. Three, three axles. Three axles, yeah, three AKs. Uh, well, we're coming from Arizona. It's been a winter down there. Tiny plants, produce, citrus. I think I have two apples for lunch. We don't care. Okay. See. Thank you. All right, nice friendly guy at the station. He just stopped. He goes. That is one big ass fifth wheel. <laughs> so I told him how long and whatnot. He said three axles? Yeah, three 8K axles. And of course he asked for the, uh, if we had any produce or plants. I was honest with him. I told him, I said, we have two apples on board, hopefully to have for lunch. He just said, we don't care. Have a good day. And away we went. So there you go. Alright, so we switched over to the two-lane highway. It's pretty much two-lane now until we get to Susanville, right?
right about Susanville. Then we're going to go through Susanville. And uh, then we're going to take a turn off. Get on 44, I believe it is. Well, a lot of traffic coming from that direction. There must be somebody slow ahead of them. Man, look at that. Maybe there's some road construction up here. We're probably 25 miles on our trip so far today. And uh, coming into a little bit, I think it's called Doyle. And uh, just so you know, there is a shell station out here. And then there's a rest area up here pretty soon. I can't see fuel prices, but it's in California. I can't see what they are. Oh, well, $4.99, I guess. Susanville, 40 miles. All right, just want to make you aware of that little fuel stop in case you didn't need some fuel. As much as Diane and I love traveling the back roads and two lane highways, this is one of the hazards. You get some road construction going on or a wreck up ahead or whatever, and uh, it can really slow down traffic. There's a, when we pulled up, I saw a ton of trucks up there. So this will slow us down some. That's all right. We're in no hurry, right? Full timers, retired, just traveling. And there we are. We're going to go through the little town of Milford. And we still have another 25 miles to Susanville, and then uh, 29 miles to our turn on the Highway 44. There you go. That was Milford. Did you see it? Yeah, maybe not. Alright, well, we're coming up to the outskirts of Susanville. There's a little intersection here you have to stop at. Now, if you hang a right right there, that will take you to Alturas and up toward Klamath Falls. A lot of people like that route if you head it over to Oregon, which we've done a number of times. Um, it's a lot narrower roads, so we, we like to go this way, and I think the distance is really about the same. So anyway, we get through this light, we're going to continue on uh, two-lane highway a couple miles into Susanville, and then we'll carry on. All right, here we go. <clears throat> the very outskirts of Susanville. This is a new light. This light wasn't here, I think, we last time we came through. Been a few years since we've been through Susanville. I'm going to switch over to the other camera. And uh, now you're looking, I'm talking out of the uh, Osmo Action 3 just for the record. And I'm going to switch over to the original Osmo and let that record our way through Susanville. Yeah, I want to take a second and make mention that uh, I used RAM mounts for years for everything. All my cars, motorcycles, sand rails, always used RAM mounts. They've been a great product and I have nothing bad to say about them. But, I kind of got tired of the suction cups on the windows in the truck. So I did some research and I ran across this outfit called Bullet, or Bullet Mounts. What is Bullet Point? I think it's just Bullet. And uh, reached out to them, asked if they had a three ball system available for the Ram trucks. I was told no. I went ahead and ordered the two ball system, which I'm using right now. So this camera's mounted on the two ball um, bullet mounting system and then I have the GPS which you probably can't see mounted on the other ball and they are as solid as a rock now the only downside is about a month after I got this two ball system and installed it they came out with a three ball system for the Ram truck now these aren't the cheapest in the world they're not expensive but they're quality made here in the US and uh, I'm just not going to get rid of a two ball system so I can spend good money on a three ball system, but uh, I wish I would have known about the three ball system coming out. But I'm gonna make you mouse this one somehow. I'm gonna find some kind of fitting that'll work on here and I'm gonna turn this into a three ball system. But I wanted to make you aware that uh, people sometimes ask what I'm using for cameras and what I'm using for mounting hardware. So I'll just mention it right now. The bullet mounting system, they make it specific for Jeeps and different trucks and cars. They are top notch. I think the guy's a veteran. If I'm not mistaken, he's a veteran that, that uh, founded this company. Don't quote me on that. I'll put a little caption here in the screen if I'm right. I'll look that up and make sure of it. It seems that 
I remember that. I did a video on this. If you want to go back through the archives, uh, I did a video on the install before I ever used it. But I have, I have a couple thousand miles under our belt using this mount, and it's fantastic. All right, that's enough of that. Oh, I'm not sponsored by Bullet at all, so don't think I'm saying this just because I'm sponsored. I get nothing for saying this at all. All right, let's carry on. Now we get to the edge of town here, it's a pretty good pull, well it's slow speed, it is a pretty, a pretty good pull for a half mile up out of here. Alright, well we made that pull up out of Susanville, now we have uh, about 2.8 miles and we'll be hanging out right on Highway 44. This is when it starts getting pretty, you know we spend all winter in Arizona, then we come back out west, and we get past Susanville there, and then here come the trees, now right here not so many. As soon as we take our right, right up here on Highway 44, the rest of our run all the way to I-5 will be all amongst the trees. It's just so pretty. That's why we love the West so much. So here you go, you're going to hang a right on Highway 44, and then we will have probably what's it say, 20, 23 miles, and then we will come to that rest area that I wanted to show you, and uh, we don't have another turn off this road for another 46 miles, and then we're out into some more two-lane highway, so come along with us. So there, Mount Shasta, we will be on these two lane highways for another 127 miles. That's where we get spit out onto I-5, is at Mount Shasta. 127 more miles of two lane highway like this. Beautiful, beautiful drive. What's well, always sad when we come through here, you never know where there's gonna be a new burn. It never fails when we come through the beautiful country has a forest fire. It's always a shame. But over the years we come through here, it's always some section that's burnt. But you know what? They clean it all up, they replant it, and we start over again. Alright, for the record, this video is being done in the Osmo Action 3 kind of a comparison thing. We're about uh, seven miles away from that rest area that I wanted to show you. So don't leave. Hang around. Alright, so the rest area is coming up here pretty soon. Seven tenths of a mile. Right behind the rest area is that uh, snowmobile park we're talking about. I think we're going to stop the rest area first, get rid of some morning coffee.
gonna go up here to the rest area. That next road right up there is actually the road takes you up to that that uh, snowmobile area. But this is more urgent right this second. All right, we'll be back. All right, so we have taken care of our important important stuff. Now there is no overnight camping in this rest area, but follow along here and check this out. I think overnight camping because it's not very big. There's only a few truck lanes and a few RV lanes, whatever, so it's gonna fill up so fast. Now there is a little road right here that you could turn right and take you over there, but it's easier if you got a big rig to uh, go down to the street. But if you're walking over to the bathroom, if you're spending the night over there, you want to walk to the bathroom instead of using the bathroom in your coach. It's an easy, easy cut through. But just go over this direction here. Then it's plenty wide. Now we have camped back here a couple, three times. And uh, I think only once have we been back here with somebody else. We've always been back here alone. I don't know if people are, just don't want to camp back here because there's no lights. It's completely dark, but check this out. I mean, this is huge back here. We always, we usually camp over here on the side you have these lanes on the side you can park. And we usually camp right back here where the sunny section is. Because then we can open up our, our door and just look out into the trees. But anyway, look at that. Still snow out here. There goes Diane. She's going to go out there and nose around see what she can see. Now I'm going to park. Because the air is so fresh up here. Why not? There we go. I'm going to walk around a bit. I'll be back. All right. We enjoyed a little walk around, stretched our legs. Hey, one thing I just thought about, too, as I was walking around getting some pictures. I think one of the reasons people don't stay back here is that there is no cell service. So I think a lot of people don't feel safe uh, being out this far in the middle of nowhere, no cell service. Um, I get it. So just know that if you come out here, no cell service, just be prepared to take care of whatever you need to take care of on your own. We have 23 more miles up here in the high country. And then we're going to drop down a pretty steep hill and uh, we're going to turn onto Highway 89, I think it is. Alright, still cruising along up here in the high country. We just left that rest area. Still going at 17 miles to our next turn. For the record, this section of video is being shot on the original Osmo and it's on a uh, ram mount stuck on the windshield, the suction cup. Let's clear the water off the right hand side. This, this is the middle of May, I think it's the 17th or 18th of May that we're coming through here. I don't know that we've ever come through this time of year and have seen this much water and this much green grass so and this much snow so that's a pretty good sign for the area all 
Alright, now for the record, this is being shot on the Osmo Action 3, right after that section on the Osmo Action original. Just want to show you some more road, check out the water off the side. This is such a pretty area. bad that the uh, trees are burnt on the left hand side but it is pretty with the snow-capped mountains off in the distance we are just about to come to our downhill area and then uh, we'll be making a turn on highway 89 I think that's called uh, old hat station area something like that when I see a sign I'll uh, I'll let you know All right, we're coming down to our little downhill. You'll see that downhill emblem right there. 6% grade for five miles. So nothing huge, but just something you have to pay attention to. Now, and for the record, this section or this part of this video is being shot on the original Osmo Action and sitting on the ram mounts. We have to go around the corner down here where that truck is where we start getting to the good grade. But uh, anyway, look at all the burn. That's so sad. We're popping down the bottom now, and again, wow, how sad it is! All this burn area, just crazy. This used to be so green and pretty. So, uh, odds are, when you come down this way, you might gather up a few people coming down that hill because you're gonna go a little slower than normal traffic. But just keep in mind that right up here, before your next turn, is a uh, wide spot you can turn off to the right and let traffic go on around you and then you're going to make make a right hand turn you're still going to be on two lane highway there's a good chance those people are going to be going that direction too so uh just do them a favor all right we'll pull over down here So now we made it down the hill. We're going to go up to the stop sign and take a right hand turn. But because we gathered up some people, we're going to pull right over here and let them go by. Yeah, Hat Creek Recreation Area. We're going to pull right over here for a second. Just to let traffic go by. And then we'll move on. Alright, we let traffic go by. We had more cars behind us than I thought we did. And every single car, I was right, every single car turned right at this stop sign, which is exactly what we're going to do. So uh, that kind of cut them some slack. And we're going to go right, and we're going to be going through Bernie Falls and toward Mount Shasta. A lot more uh, two-lane highway. So Mount Shasta McLeod is 69 miles away. And then uh, I think it's about another 10 to 12 miles until we reach I-10 or I-5. All right, keep riding along with us. You can't tell me this isn't beautiful country, right? You'll want to come this way next time. I don't know if you can see it or not, but this is our first glimpse of Mount Shasta. So off to the left, the upper left probably in this picture, there's a mountain way off in the distance, that's Mount Shasta. So at some point today, we'll be driving at the base of that. This whole section down here burnt a number of years ago. That house survived, the house over the right survived. 
there were fires all around them. I cannot believe how they survived those fires, but you can see how they replanted the hillsides up there. So if you come this way, you will come up to a uh, stoplight, kind of out in the middle of nowhere. You can uh, turn here and go to Bernie or Redding, or turn and go to Alturas, and Bernie Falls is actually straight ahead, which if you're out in this area, uh, Bernie Falls is a pretty cool place to go check out. You're not going to get down in there and park with a big rig, so don't even think about that, but if you're driving through the car or camper van or something like that. It's kind of a nice spot to check out. There you go. Bernie Falls Park is six miles ahead. Just in case you ever come through here. McLeod is 47 miles. So 47 more miles plus another 10 of this kind of two lane highway with tree lined and Pure beauty. Alright, so this section of the video is being videoed by the Osmo Action 3. And right here, if you're going to be trying to go to Bernie Falls, is where you're going to turn into the Bernie Falls State Park. So, but again, be sure to do your research. Find out what size of rig you're in before you just pull down in there. So I know we wouldn't be able to pull down in there. But we have gone there. Motorcycle rides, we pulled down there and checked it all out. It's pretty worth a look if you're in the area. about what four or five travel day videos we've done now and this has to have shown the prettiest scenery of any that we've done so far I know driving around out in the desert that's not very attractive and uh, not very entertaining but I would sure hope that driving out here on these highways with the scenery we're showing you now you might enjoy that I know I would I know I do I enjoy driving this road I enjoy driving the West Coast Which brings up a good time to ask. Let me know again. I'll ask you. Do you enjoy these travel day videos? Do you see me post them and just ignore them? Which I guess if you do that, you wouldn't be hearing me say this. But uh, give me an idea down below. Do you like these uh, travel day videos? Do you want me to do them only when they're going to be pretty scenery? Or do you want to see all the travels? I'll be listening. Alright, so remember a while back when I said, Look, there's Mount Shasta way off in the distance? Well, that's Mount Shasta up ahead of us now, so we're getting a lot closer. Too bad it's a little bit hazy today. I don't know what that is. It looks like smoke up there.
this is me being shot on the uh, Osmo Action original. So at this point, this is where Diane and I start complaining. So we have about uh, eight miles to, until we get into McLeod, and it's just straight. Just like it's looking at right now, it's just straight and rolling, hardly any turns. And we get in this section going, are we there yet? Are we there yet? You know, you've been to those sections of the road. It's still pretty, don't get me wrong. It's just straight and rolling. See there? All you see ahead of you is straight and rolling. Left hand side is a campground. Sorry, Diane was talking. Uh, left hand side is a campground. Right up here at this intersection. If you turn left, there's a gas station. And if you turn right, right here, there's another gas station and a food store. So now we have 10 miles to the freeway and it's a pretty good pull out of here so just know that all right well the purdy drive is about over now we're going to go down here in just a second we're going to get on i-5 north toward portland right here and then Going to go on up to Wairika and head to our campground. So, once we get on the freeway, we'll give you a little mileage indication, and then we won't bore you with any freeway drive until we get to Wairika. All right, so now we have uh, 39 miles of freeway. Then we're going to take exit 776. You can see those trucks off the right hand side? There's all the pretty those trucks. Are, those are always so colorful. Alright, we're coming into Wairika, California. Most of the stuff that uh, of interest be right here to the left. You have Riley's food store. Looks like there's a McDonald's over there, Taco Bell. There's, I know there's a, a car dealership. I think it's a Ford dealership. Black Bear Diner, a bunch of stuff. We're going to go up here to exit 776 and cruise up to our campground. We're going to hang out for the next three days. It already is, Black Bear Diner. Black Bear Diner, we'll be, we'll be checking that out. Now we mentioned we're going to go to Black Bear Diner for two reasons. One, we have a dear friend who's passed away that every time we rode down through here we always stopped at Black Bear Diner to eat. Always had a Blackberry Cobbler. We're going to do that just in remembrance of him. And our Upside app, our Upside Fuel app, if we go there and buy get food, we get a I think it's a 30, 36% back, up to $10 back. So, hey, we always spend 30 bucks on a meal, so we're certainly gonna go there and have a meal. All right, I'm gonna pay attention. We'll look for 776. Should be a mile and a half up the road here. All right, here we are, exit 776. A travel, a travel plaza up here and a liquor store. We'll find out what else. All the GPS says is turn on road. Yes, and this is the road. There you go. Wairika RV Park. Not a very big sign, but uh, GPS said 400 foot. I didn't see much else up the road. So it's right. Boy, how convenient is that? There's the RV park, and there's a uh, truck stop right there. So if you need fuel, can't get any more convenient than that. Alright, get 
guess we go straight down in the way it looks. And I would guess it's parked back here. All right, we'll go check in. And we'll go find our site. All right, well, I forgot to turn it on. Hey, we just, we, we parked in front of the building. We went right around the building. We're in E3. So here we are. I mean, it's right back here behind the uh, office. Here we are, E3. Well, I apologize this video became so long, but trust me, I cut out so much video that this could have been twice as long and it would have been all beautiful scenery. So hey, if you enjoyed this video at all, how about showing it by giving a thumbs up, maybe leave a comment down below, possibly hit that subscribe button, and as always, have a great day, and we'll see you in the next video.